You're now watching Two Old Farts Making Noises. Joe, do you wonder why some businesses succeed and some businesses fail? Why some businesses grow and some businesses don't? That's what this show is all about. Business, business, business. All right. Welcome back to another week of the Lost Dollar Business Club. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So big news of the day. Big news. Uh, so I'll just give you the recap before we get into the first commercial. Uh, so we're going to talk about remote work today from both sides of the, the coin. Uh, one side saying some very big companies saying remote work is here to stay. They'll keep doing the hybrid environment. And other massive companies saying, no way, you got to better get your butts back into the office. And so we'll talk a little bit about that and how it's how generally I don't think that it applies um, broadly to ever, anyone. You have to figure out what's uh, what it works for each company. And then in the second half of the show, we'll talk about sales engineering and technical sales, which Kurt might have, know a little bit about because... Uh, that's, we're going to have our guest, John Kerr, the author of Mastering Technical Sales, on next week's show. He's the guy who wrote the Bible for my industry, so uh, for my profession, which is sales engineering. So uh, got him on the show, met him at, a, at an event, and uh, he, we'll have him next week. So uh, those are the topics for today. Mm. Get the freedom and the flexibility of remote work in the lucrative tech industry. Bend your life around, around the world. Bendicoot is the premier course and community for thriving in a remote tech career. Join the revolution today. Bendicoot.com, official partner of the Lost Dollar Business Club. And can, can we talk, before we get started, can we talk about the amazing merchandise that is now available from Two Old Farts Entertainment? Oh, okay. you, you, you got your mug then? Got the mug. I love it. Yeah. All right. and it's, it's customizable. You can change the, the color of the, the, the outline there so and the yeah. handle. So thank you, David. Where did you it's guys get did you not get yours, Kurt? Nice. No, my 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 T-shirt has not arrived. Oh, it's, well. sent, it's all it's, it's all been sent out. Everything's got sent out. So oh, blame John? it on Canada Post. Yeah. yeah right. Okay. Yeah. The issue. And John, well, you didn't get it. Yet? I well, was I supposed to say something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You didn't get your mug yet. I thought no, I didn't get my mug. No, you sent it I, out? Think, I think John, I think John was on holiday when the mugs were being uh, organised. But oh, we'll no. organise a mug for you, John. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll I thought back. I was getting a package: a, a mug, a cap, you know, uh, a, a water bottle. Well, you know, you can. You, if, if you wear it all, you can have it. You have to. If we send you a cap, you have to. You have to wear it yeah. every time. Uh, all yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If you want to get ahead, wear a cap. That's what they say. That's right. That's we're, well, we're, well. Yeah. <laughs> You do it at Christmas time, and you can put your reindeer hat on, and then you, you know, your uh, merch. Yeah, <laughs> with the shirt, the hat, the mug, water bottles. Oh, yeah. We have it all. Yeah, T-shirt too. Yeah, we have it all. Yeah. Link will the link all merch will be below, right? Right, David. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, it will be added. Uh, we, uh, uh, Stephen's not with us today. He's the he's the master of all all things uh, all YouTube. Yeah, yes, I'm right. just. I'm just, I'm just the, I'm just a very poor apprentice, which people who watched the last show that I produced this week will will see. But uh, there you go. At least, at least I'm recording this one. We'll take it. We're, yeah, this one's recording. That's that's a good start, David. Nice. Yeah, ev evidently you have to have a little red button in the in the corner that says recording. That makes all the difference. But all right, but all right. perfect. The, the mastery, the mastery of podcasts. You know, we've we've oh, got gosh, it. Yeah. Yeah. We've got it here at the yeah. Lost Dollar Business Club. So I sent you guys the couple articles um, about remote work, and we've talked about remote work before on this show in the earlier days. 
And um, it's mainly, so first of all, the, the, the interest in remote work is I've personally been a remote worker for now uh, nine years. And uh, my first oh. manager back then, yeah, it's, it's been a while. And my first so manager. Do you know who you are, Michael, when you go to the office and say, who's this guy? That's well, so that's the, so that's the trick. That's the trick. So we've, we've got, we've got video, we've got phone, but you've, I think you still have to go into an office or to meet the people, uh, meet your colleagues once a quarter or so for like a week and a half. That's generally how get together as your, at least for your team uh, or your department, some period of time, you know, every three months or so. Um, well, but yeah. And then go out, then go out on a bender. Of course, that's the whole idea of getting together. Well, there, there's got to be some of that. It sounds like, you know, that, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, not for the record, of course, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, getting together, I think, is still important. But, um, but Nvidia, you know, one of these massive tech companies now, because they make all these chips for AI, which we love at the Lost Island Business Club and the Two Old Farts Entertainment Channel. Uh, so Nvidia is driving all this AI, and they actually are fine with remote work. So they maintain offices that people can go to as their teams or whenever they want to, to get together. And, uh, but they, they don't have any mandate, any policy, every team can manage it on their own. And, uh, and they trust them to do that. And as you know, Nvidia is doing phenomenally, uh, not just on the stock market, but in, in what they actually create the, uh, the AI chips that they, and the graphics processors that they create. So, uh, so what do you guys think? I mean, I don't think it's broadly applicable to every industry. I don't think remote work is for yeah. everyone or every company. But for the companies that it can be for, you know, if you're aligned properly, uh, it can work really well. I'd like to know the uh, proportion of people that are physically involved in the production of the chips versus the people that are, uh, you know, designing or right. involved in the, uh, um, let's say, the, <laughs> for lack of a better, the white collar side of the, uh, of the equation. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of people who are going to be uh, actually in the fabs, in the chip fabrication uh, facilities. That's true. That one you can't call in. But uh, <laughs> but that's the thing. There's a lot of jobs that you can't you can't do remotely. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say there's a group of people that get really frustrated about this continuous debate about oh, I can go into the office or not, because some of them are just stuck there. You know, if you're in a sausage factory and you're making sausages, you can't do that at home. You know, it's a, 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 a lot of people feel excluded. Think, yeah, why? Why is that flexibility available? To, uh, you know, mm. to so many other people, and why do I have to commute and they don't? Right, et cetera, right. Et cetera. And, and if you can yeah. think about, like, when uh, when we were in the middle of COVID and the, and the shutdowns, and of course that kind of drove this whole side of the industry. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the great parts, of course, is you didn't have to line up in traffic, right? So you're saving all that yeah. parking and driving and uh, repairs in your vehicle and all of that. That was fantastic. And that's what's being afforded to the people who probably earn more than the people that are in the factory. And mm. they're still having to pay for their gas. They still have to deal with all that stuff. Companies saving all this wonderful money. But is that money now going back to the people that actually are now still forced to go in? Interesting. Pro probably interesting. not. Right. Probably not. No. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Why is that, John? Well, why do you think it's not? Look, because it because the I'm sure the companies will say, uh, look, we still have to have the physical for just in case, you know, a good chunk of the people come back to the office one day or another, or some days of the week, and so we have to sort of plan for, you know, uh, let's just say. 60% of the people showing up every day. And so there's no real savings and uh, we still need the office space. Um, I'm sure that's the part, part of the argument uh, for not redistributing any savings. Plus, you know, uh, you know, is it, is it, uh, it it's, uh, you know, it is white collar that, that benefits. I'm always hmm. wondering, is it, is it work that uh, if it is it creative work or is it sort of piecemeal work, sort of very project and it's very easy to measure? Um, because otherwise, 
you kind of need to be in the office. I talk to people. Uh, I don't know if chip design, would, you know, if you're a part of a chip design team, wouldn't it be yeah. better to, to, to swap ideas with the guy right next to you? The other part, problem I, you know, I, I, I see is that I, the, the CEO of NVIDIA was saying, I don't care if you work in a cafe or in an office or, you know, at home. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, really sort of mind-bending type of work. How can you do it in a cafe? You don't you have to concentrate and need some silence? So, well, that's this is this is maybe part of a. Uh, I mean, I think there's a little bit of a generational divide too, because I know that uh, some people can work in the cafe. They put their headphones in, they just sit down and focus, knock out the writing that they have to do or the uh, design work that they have to do. Um, I like to switch it up once in a while and do my the 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 work that I'm assigned to do or that I need to do myself. I can do independently at a cafe or somewhere like that. But, but, the but why are people sitting in cafes? Is it because they want to save even more money? Uh, oh, it's, you know, it's somewhere, it's somewhere warm? So you don't have to pay for the heating? I mean, <laughs> there's all sorts of uh, you know, back stories to this. And, and you, yeah. you, you do hear that some people say, when I have a real project, which I have like r real control over, and I've got a big chunk to do, I'd much rather do that at home, but right. you know, when I, when I've got bits and pieces that I have to to talk to the team about, you know, I can do that in the office. But I always think to myself, well, who's pulling all these strings? You know, because I'd have to agree with Kurt. Everybody was, you know, okay, COVID was SH one T. We all know that, but it was great in respect that the roads were empty, um, you know, and uh, it was it seemed to be a lot calmer everywhere, less. People were running around, you know, getting well, people were scared and, and scared and on yeah. edge. So I think that <laughs> the reason why they were. But the thing is, of course, right? Who owns all these office blocks? Because well, you yeah. could technically say they're they're now all redundant. That well, so, New York City, New York so we, City, what do we do? Turn, turn them into social housing. I mean, that, uh, that's an option. Yeah, commercial real estate definitely has to be rethought. So they say that in New York, the empty workspace in New York City is more than the workspace in Houston and Dallas-Fort Worth combined. So there's a lot of, we're talking about 20% or higher vacancy rates uh, in commercial real estate uh, in New York City. And it's, and it's all over the country. So the thing is, as a country, we have to think, what are we going to do with this space? I mean, there are housing would be one uh, one way to do it. You'd have to convert. I don't know how uh, onerous that would be to convert a space, but uh, you know, if you, if that opens up a, a, a really good question. And and I hate to do this because it is aside from what we're talking about. But you know, U.S. has a, a huge in, in in here as well to some degree. There's a big issue with homelessness, right? And if you look at the amount of spaces that was occupied for the sole purpose of housing business, right? It's probably dwarfs the amount of uh, uh, homelessness in all of those major cities. So, you know, there's on one side, like John was saying, the, the companies are not going to want to part with all that cash that they're actually saving right now on the proviso that they might need in the future. They've got a huge amount of space, which they're not occupying and is, is basically laying fallow while people are on the streets and, get, and struggling to get jobs too. It's just cyclical insanity, really. Wow, yeah, so uh, uh, it's a fair what concern. Concerns me, oh, sorry, Michael. No, go ahead, uh, David. What, what, what concerns me is I think that a lot of these companies have had massive subsidies being given to them by government, local government, central government, to build all these office blocks, you know, mm. to... to make a space that, that business can can use. And so therefore, I think some of them are legally restricted um, to, to flip them to, to housing. And the other thing is, of course, it's going to cost money. And the, and then we go back to the self same thing. Oh, you know, we've got this office block, it's empty. Yeah, sure. You know, you can come and live in it, providing that somebody pays for it to be converted. And it's not going to be me because, hey, I own an office block. So we end up playing sort of ping pong all the time because 
at the end of the day, who's got, who picks up that tab? Is it, is it, you know, no, it's a noble thinker. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. No, I was going to say that at the office space, especially in, in the big cities, is in prime uh, expensive real estate. Now, to convert it, you know, to to low-income housing, it's like, well, I not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Plus, you know, uh, the the cost to to try to you know to reconvert the, the office buildings to 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 housing, to, you know, uh, people housing is is good. as you know as uh, Dave was saying, it's going to be expensive, and so who's going to pay for that? And and then there's the what I call a bureau. Well, you know, it's not zoned for that. We're going to have to change <laughs> the laws and. And, and they usually, you know, just drag their feet, and you know, somebody slips them. Their son needs a job, and you know, well, we'll help you out, but you know, let's just slow this down, and you know. So there's all that going on. So it's gonna, it would take a hell of a long time. We could probably put the, put people in, in housing, in a quicker, easier way. But uh, just a thought. But even if, uh, let's just say, we left it as business only, right? And uh, you've got all this empty space. You've got also smaller companies that maybe not in prime real estate areas, right? And they would love to be in more prime real estate areas. Uh, you know, are they going to want to share their, their beautiful prime real estate with somebody, you know, some company that's lesser than them to create hey, space well, for people for housing? Interesting. Yeah, we'll sublease it to you, but, you know, it's... It's going to be a different dollar amount uh, than in the in the suburbs. Yeah. 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 Well, these I mean, so one of the companies that forces people to come back into the office is Amazon. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about Amazon and the giant tech companies on the last show with uh, with Corey Doctorow and his book, uh, The Internet Con. And uh, I mean, do, sorry, Michael, but do we know why? Do we know why Bezos thinks it's important? To everybody back well, I mean, he, he makes a, he makes a, a, a they make a fair point as they're saying for them they call it they they think it's the energy the collaboration and the connections that can happen in real life that are necessary for the company to to thrive and um, I mean I think it, it comes down to the company culture itself though and in that co in that Amazon's company corporate company culture which uh, the factory workers don't have the choice, you know, the, the warehouse workers don't have the choice of, uh, you know, working remotely, but the corporate office does. Uh, they did during the during COVID. But um, yeah, I mean, if the culture is not set up and, and from a technology standpoint, if the technology is not there to really create spaces for collaboration and create a culture of people picking up the phone or jumping on a, 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 room, a huddle or an immediate Zoom call, then, um, then it makes sense that uh, certain companies are going to want to have that, you know, in-office experience. Um, but a lot of jobs, like sales, for example, and I've been in sales for 15 years um, in the software sales space. You know, sales, you're gonna, you're, you're traveling a lot less now since COVID, but you're traveling and you're on the phone anyway. You're not doing every deal um, on uh, in person. And certainly now after COVID, you're not having every meeting in person. So what does it matter if you can get great salespeople who live in, uh, in Iowa versus New York City or, uh, or somewhere outskirts of San Francisco rather than in the city? I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm all for remote work. I think it really does, um, you know, having that, the ability for companies to, to do remote work can make them more efficient. And um, and more competitive, but we haven't really seen the advantages to that financially or otherwise. You know, things have just kept going up and up and up, regardless of whether people working from the <laughs> office or remotely. Well, you're talking about the stock market, or are you talking about what what's going up? A little of both, stock market, but also the just the the cost of goods. Oh yeah, the though, yeah. Is, yeah. So, yes, you go you know, sort of a double bubble, haven't you, for a lot of people that are. That are satellited around all these big office spaces in Europe, very much so. The little cafes, you know, uh, people are doing lunch rooms, that sort of stuff. So you got double bubble for them. On the one side, it's the, um, the the COVID thing. Nobody's going back in the volumes they were going back, so that's affected their trade. 
and of course all the price of, of you know of, of raw goods whether it be you know for a cup of coffee or to make a sandwich has all gone through the roof as well okay. so so it's difficult to know you know uh, how much pain you know office fulfillment actually is bringing to to the areas where they are and yeah so you know it's, somebody it's, still must be paying the rent i mean well we have to i mean we have to rethink things uh, because I think the large the the incorporation of remote workers into the workforce is not going away. I think it's only going to increase if if not just stay steady. I don't think remote work is going to leave, um, but I think we're going to have to adapt to having a combination of people who are hybrid, people who are in office, and people who are totally remote. And that's and that's already happening. Those discussions are already happening at companies like GitLab who have their 100% remote and they're having very public discussions about how to manage that um, even asynchronously so people can get the data they need, the information they need and still do their jobs very effectively. Yeah, I mean, this, this, whole, this whole thing has been great for India, right? Because a lot of remote work, shall we say, in the face-to-face -face or a voice to voice side of it for uh, i think is a better way to put it has gone there right so they've gr they've you know greatly uh, appreciated things like covid and things like that happening because it's actually benefited them greatly but yeah it hasn't done much for us it's possible <laughs> the remote work the remote work uh, shift has made it possible for workers in other countries to have access to markets that they didn't otherwise have that's true although i see a lot of remote jobs that are restricted to countries some companies just say they have to be u.s based or they have to be somewhere in the eu or you know there are restrictions on some of these remote jobs because what i've yeah, noticed is just, a lot of ai that's just yeah a lot of ai com combined with that right so you know the first thing you hit is a a giant uh, ai switchboard uh where you spend you know a good uh, hour of your life going around around in circles uh, to eventually get pocketed with somebody who's not really cognizant of where your city actually sits in the, in the entire country, uh, trying to answer a question uh, that you that is really focused on where you live. Mm -hmm. it, it can be a bit challenging and a bit irritating because, again, the reason it's gone over there has been to save that company money to make them more efficient. Well, but we're not seeing it. <laughs> well, that goes to the to the collapse of of. Uh jobs in the United States that are, I mean, the outsourcing, the outsourcing and offshoring uh, mm -hmm. that we talked about on the on the previous shows uh, with uh, Michael Collins about multinational corporations. I mean, yeah, that's, you, you, ideally, you're not losing quality of service when you're doing that kind of thing. But the reality is when you're doing offshoring and, out, and outsourcing, sometimes you do have that loss in quality. I think, I think you do because there's a, a lot of markets which are, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll call out the UK for that. I have a lot of people in the UK that I speak to, and they're always bitching about, I don't want to talk to somebody with that accent. You know, just mm. fundamentally racist. I can't understand what they're saying. You know, they could be the most qualified person in the world. You know, it's okay to go yeah. to the yeah. National, Health, National Health Service and talk to a doctor who probably has the same accent. But the fact that somebody calls you about your banking and you don't sound like they're working for the BBC... You know, that's, that's, that's brought a lot of pressure, um, you know, to do away with the, with a lot of the offshoring for the call centers. Yeah, I, I, I don't... Fun, fun, yeah, bringing fun, I don't fundamentally don't, racist. I don't Sorry. care if they're, if they're uh, in Mexico, India, or wherever. I could care less. As long as at the end of the day, the, the reason why you called or the thing that you're trying to solve gets solved and that they're, they're exactly. cognizant of where they're doing it. Um, it. What bothers me is when companies are just doing that as a cost savings but what they're not at it's not a value add because they're they're just you know they're handing it over to somebody who knows little and that's it's unfortunate and unfair to the person on the other side and it's uh, unfortunate to the customer yeah my my question on this whole remote thing is you know a lot of uh, articles and companies say it's they gain productivity, you know, uh, do you really gain productivity? You know, uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm, you know, how, how do we measure that? Because maybe people work, a, can work longer hours, but you know, they are, they can also 
do little side things that they wouldn't be able to do while they were in an office. You know, they can go and run little errands and uh, you know, can shuttle the kids to school or, uh, you know, all these other aspects. Um, I suppose that if you if it, if the work is uh, sort of uh, you know, piecemeal, I don't know, it's not the right word for it, but something that's yeah, project easy to based. measure, you know, then you can yeah. you can yeah. say, well, all right, you know, I need this by X day or you know in a couple of hours, and then maybe it's maybe it's easier easier to to uh, to, to to manage. But I'm just wondering, you know, if you have you know if you have a department that's, I don't know, 50 people, the people that are managing this, are they spending more time, extra time, you know, because of the physical aspects, you have to go in the conference call or, or Zoom to, you know, you're doing a ton of Zoom calls uh, just to manage the, uh, your group. Maybe I'm being naive, you know, and, and the, it, it's teams that are small that, can do this easily, but if you have a big department, I, I can't see how you manage, you know, a uh, hundred people on, on Zoom calls. And you, you raise a really good point in there as well. And as you, you've also got people that, you like you say, they're taking a break, shuttling the kids off or whatever. But you've also got people in there, let's say, you know, single moms or single dads uh, that uh, would normally have that, a horrendous uh, cost of childcare, right? Yeah that that's being offset by them actually being home. So there's a, there's a bit of a plus there, right? Yeah. To, well, to everything. And for people who, uh, who have disabilities and who can't, uh, I mean, it's opened up the world, the remote work world has opened it up for people who have disabilities who can't get out of the house or have trouble doing that. And, and we've seen, I've seen, seen that in, uh, even in my local area uh, in rural America, where uh, there are people who are, who are doing more remote work because they can, as opposed to previously one that just wasn't possible. So in terms of the, I want to go back to the productivity. It's a big question. It's been a, it's been a debate since the beginning of remote work. And you'll find some studies that say yes, and some studies that say no. Um, but uh, but the, I think the consensus has been that, uh, that you'll actually put in more hours as a remote worker and, and because, because you're not spending that time commuting. So you can actually have more time to actually do the job that you're you're hired to do. Yeah, you're not counting commute time toward, uh, you know, in your head toward uh, the time that you're trying to get to work. Yeah, I mean, I remember, you guys in the I, states, I, you will you'll work from dusk till dawn. And for countries, <laughs> a lot of countries that maybe are used to working eight hours, <laughs> you know, they don't want their boss calling yeah. them at nine, nine o'clock at night, right? Come to Holland. <laughs> so, yeah, come to Holland. Yeah. So you know, I think you know it probably doesn't affect people maybe in the U.S. as much as it does uh, in countries mm. where they go, well, sorry, you know, I, I work from nine to five. I don't mm, want to it. work from nine to yeah. nine. I, 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 you remember, Kurt, we, we both of us had a little bit of experience in the European Patent Office here uh, in The Hague. Um, and what was interesting there, I think, is people worked purely on a project basis. They were given a project to, or, or, a, or a portfolio of things they had to do in a particular period of time. And the office was open what, from seven in the morning to ridiculously late at night. And it was up to you when you came in and you were assessed on your project. Yep. You know, if, did, you, did you go through the volume? Uh, you know, and it's, uh, you found a lot of people just found that to be absolutely fantastic because they could actually live around their work. OK, it's white collar workers. They weren't making, you know, they weren't putting sausage meat in making the sausages. But um yeah, uh, that that office space, you know, and, uh, and Amazon, you touched upon as well. I mean, Mr. Bezos doesn't have a very good record regarding you know, <laughs> any, anybody's workers' rights, you know, white collar or blue collar. So it's just a control thing for me. And, and it's, yeah. if you can't, if you're employing people that you can't trust, then you have an issue. They don't. You shouldn't have taken them on in the first place. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a really fair point. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a fair point because the uh, it, and and maybe it depends on you know size of the company too. I notice a lot of, it's it's maybe easier for smaller teams or startups to actually uh, have remote work policies because the teams are are tighter. Um, 
But on the other hand, it, it does come down to your overall, are you doing the work? And I think yeah. it's, it's, it was resoundingly clear during COVID that people were doing the work really well. Um, if you just look at, at what people were able to accomplish from, from the work, remote work environment. So the question is, how do you continue that into the future in a way that respects the people who still want to come into the office? Because I know lots of people who prefer yeah. that. You know. Go ahead, John. Yeah. What about you, John? Are you, yeah, are you, I was going to say that you know, for the people. Yeah, I was an office guy. You know, I mean, the remote thing was never an option so for me. So. And uh, if, if it was, if it was, it, it seemed to be for senior people at the time. Um, but I was, with, you know, going back to the people that have, uh, you know, childcare and, and those types of costs and activities that they need to manage, the going to the office a few days a week, I'm wondering if that makes their life worse because it, it's not a, you know, a, a predict maybe it, it is predictable, but it it means managing you know your childcare and uh, you know other activity you know, I don't know taking care of a senior person maybe a little bit more difficult. Um, the other thing is that you know as we've discussed, it's it's all service type of work that's not physical that that that's uh, in, that's eligible. Let's just say or has the opportunity to. To do the work uh, remotely, so um. right. Well, and it's and it's certain it's certain departments like sales, marketing, customer yeah. success, customer support. Um, those are the main areas where I see remote work really thriving well Easy, because you yeah. can do those things. You well, can there's a lot of offices where, which are glad that salespeople are not around because it's a lot quieter. <laughs> yeah, so true. Also true. Even Don't accounting. We know, don't we know yeah, there's oh, a lot of work God, that can yes. go. Yeah, there's a lot of work that can go off, uh, you know, off office, shall we say? Um, you know, as you know, as you did, said David, as long as you hire the right people, you trust them, and then you can measure, you know, the work. You know, go, go do, you know, and you know what you said, Kurt. You know, pe people do work longer <laughs> when they work at the office. <laughs> I mean, at home. Uh, it's like a little bit of a guilt thing that you that people uh, I think uh, have. This was uh, a thing know, called the Protestant I, I work this. ethic. Yeah, that's what they call yeah. it, John. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> work I'm ethic. On Come on, you know, you you finish at six. You go and you, maybe at six thirty. You 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 go six. Yeah, that's late. Shopping. Nine, yeah. nine to five. Uh, John. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, that's when you don't. Hour for lunch. That's when you don't get promoted, right? <laughs> when you do just the night. Well, I've never been promoted, and look where it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, you, you work till six. You work till six. You, you you have dinner with the family, and then you're like, you know, you know, Han, let them see. I I think I can finish a little. I got a little to do, a little extra, and you and you go from eight to nine, eight to ten, and yeah, and then yeah, uh, and then, yeah, and then all of a sudden. And then That's all of a sudden you're yours. divorced. Yeah, yeah, you're divorced, and then you got all the time to do whatever you need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's all fine if it's your decision, but if you if your boss has a brain fart at eight thirty and decides to call you, that's completely yeah. different. You don't have a light, yeah. right? And that's the downside yeah. about remote work is when well, you're in those yeah. environments where you're a little yeah. too close to the yeah. boss. You know, you you get a lot of late night calls on Saturday. You know what I mean, yeah. and that's what people are getting haven't annoyed. The French, with. Haven't the French changed the law? That can't, that's that's illegal now, I think, in France. Yes. And boss, Sweden, it's been in court. Norway. Finland, yeah. Norway, Sweden yeah. has always been illegal. Yeah, you have a special F off button on your telephone. You know, you just click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called a lawyer. <laughs> the smartphone it is yes. deadly. Yeah, <laughs> right. remote that's work bad. really. When you think of it, yeah, right. Uh, it's, yeah, you're twenty four seven accessible that's the John, but that's you know, the setting boundaries I, I just human. need a favor <laughs> yeah 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 that's how yeah. it usually does sure yeah. it starts with a favor but yeah uh, anyway it's we have this uh, really big deal that we need to close <laughs> yeah it's sort of yeah. yeah it's true just this but, one time uh, yeah just this one time yeah. Uh, all right, so in the, in the last few minutes of the show before we hit uh, Lost and Found, which I hope you guys have found some good Lost and Founds, 
uh, talk about, let's talk about what's going to happen next week. So to lay the groundwork for what a sales engineer is, do any of you guys know what sales engineering really is? No? So, okay. Because uh, so uh, yeah, we, obviously we all not. read the thing you sent to us, Michael. Yeah, we, right. We, <laughs> we, we, it, was, it was so interesting. It was so yeah. interesting I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, it is it is kind of a niche uh, industry or niche profession in a way. It's really it's it's usually it's been around for thirty or forty years. Where uh, you'd have Sounds to like give you're picking yourself up again here. SC, mm -hmm. <laughs> SC, well, SCs would have to give uh, give technical demonstrations of of technical products. Whether it used to be physical and now it's a lot of software, um, yeah. but you know you have to you have to know the product. Well enough to actually match it to the to the needs and challenges of the. Uh, of okay, the so it's a, it's a it's a bit like somebody selling stockings and, and vegetables on the market, but now you're wearing a suit. Is that what it is? Now you're wearing a suit. That's right. Yeah, just bringing it to market, bringing that software <laughs> to market. But you do it alongside, you know, an SE rides alongside an account executive who's really managing the entirety of the deal, and the SE is working with the AE throughout that deal. To just make sure that and 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 align the challenges of the uh, of the customer to the the capabilities of the platform, and these software platforms. I mean, I I work for Experience.com, and I don't think it's very technically very heavy compared to things like SAP or uh, or those bigger ERP like enterprise uh, resource platforms, but um, but still, you still have to do, you still have to tell the right story. You still have to get uh, there's still a lot of threads of uh, selling that have to be involved there. And we're going to have John Kerr next week actually talk about his book, which has become somewhat of the Bible for, for sales engineers called Mastering Technical Sales. And we're going to talk about the point of it is to talk about how the industry has changed and the profession has changed, but how similarly a lot of things have not changed uh, in, in that business, just like in the businesses that you guys were in too. So, okay. um, yeah. So, so the, the other, other thing, which ha the other thing that hasn't changed, of course, is we're always running out of time on this show. Yeah. So uh, let's go. Let's go straight into uh, lost and found. All right. So who's lost a dollar this week, and who's found a dollar this week? All right. Lost and found. So as always, we'll save David right. for the coup de grace at the end. <laughs> but, uh, but Kurt, why don't you start us off? Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, uh, Sydney Powell um, saying she's guilty. Uh, I don't know if that's a loss or, or a gain because it's not like she's going to do any hard time, but hopefully she has information that just puts an end to all this drama. Uh, so I, I guess that's kind of a, a, a one, uh, a found. And then uh, my loss is, uh, it, it is two is in the same category. Don't know if it's a, a, a win or a, a lose, but anyway, let's just call it a big uh, loss. Uh, Philip Morris reporting revenue losses. Uh, you know, I think we we win because, hey, that's just one less person is going to have uh, lung cancer. And uh, for them, it's a loss, obviously, because they're losing money. But I'm going to say take that as a win. All right. The, the failing cigarette companies, that's a win. There you go, yeah. Kurt. And uh, John, what do you got? Okay, uh, what do I have? You know, so well, Argentina, you know, is, has elections coming on Sunday, and uh, you know, in the run up to that, you know, the the peso has devalued. You know, it was two weeks ago. You know, two weeks ago, it was some somewhere in the seven fifty to to one. You know, seven fifty pesos to one. Uh, to one dollar, yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's not, there's an official which is controlled, and uh, you know that hasn't moved. It's three hundred and sixty uh, pesos to to the dollar. But the free market, or they in Argentina they call it the blue, sort of like I don't know why, but uh, I think it's because of the blue, the blue stripe of the hundred dollar bill that you see there in the background. Uh -huh. Now it's uh, it's trading at a thousand fifty. So you know that's a and that's a hell of a lot, big loss for, you know, dollar loss, hundreds of dollars, uh, pesos, shall we say, lost it in Argentina in a matter of, you know, week and a half going into the elections. Um, and, you know, who's won a dollar? Um, 
Mm. This is going to be controversial. You know, all the arms dealers, you know, uh, and, and, you know, the Lockheed Martins and the, uh, 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 what is it, Rockwell, uh, you know, a bunch of Boeing and all, all these companies and all these wars. It's just, it's just a talk about, yes. you know, uh, sales going through the roof. You know, they're, they're, they're just printing it. I mean, certainly ammo companies, uh, which is the big sort of the, the big story in, in this war, right? They're, you know, the, the, the West is, is basically digging into the, the, the reserves of the ammunition. So, so defense companies are winning, the, you know, not just dollar, they're winning billions. So that's my, yeah. my dollar one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got, we got the sound effect. Well, I have, a, I have a, what's that? I was going to say yeah, the West is like the Walmart for war. No oh, boy. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you could say on the other side that, uh, you know, sometimes you need the conflict to get to a, a level of peace. So, uh, you know, that's the other side of, of the coin. But uh, it's tragic what's going on with these wars around the world, and it's, it's terrible. Um, but on the, so on a, on a totally different note, um, my found was for my own company, experience.com, because we got named, thank you for that, we got named one of the top four uh, highest rated um, private cloud software companies because we do cloud software. Um, we were rated one of the highest, uh, one of the top four in this uh, Battery Ventures uh, survey of employees. So that was a big win. It's a good place to work. I like it. <laughs> I love working there. And, uh, you know, we got an award for it. Congrats. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That was good. Should have an applause button there. Yeah, we did. <laughs> My experience, huh? Experience, that's, that's right. What's it called? Experience.com. Customer Experience Management experience. Software. Com. Yeah. Ah. All yeah. right. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. All right, David. Uh, you're on What's... mute. You're on. Uh, yeah. great. The crazy thing is, when I ran the advert, I lost my mic. I've lost my ears, so I didn't hear anything that anybody was saying, which is pretty good. Um, <laughs> right. So that's, that, that's definitely for me a complete, yeah, right, complete loss. Um, I've got a conspiracy, or I've got something. No, we, we'll, we'll keep the conspiracy for when Mr. Siegel comes back because he loves his conspiracy. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be offering you, um, I think it's going to be a pound dollar. Uh, it's the, um, the city of Utrecht in Holland. They oh, okay. run a water, water purification plant. Okay. And, and now they've started to remove... Um, all the uh, all the poo basically all the raw material and the, and everything they can find out of the water and what they're doing is they're removing the cellulose uh, which is you know from the flush toilet papers basically and they're now reusing those passing them on as a bio-based uh, building materials um, which wow. of course will lead to good old wow. CS. <laughs> Good old CS <laughs> hey, and of course yeah. it's all eco, all eco friendly, yeah. Oh right, right. So that so is make, a... make make of that what you will. So <laughs> so um, yeah, we're just encouraging. I think the the local government is just encouraging people to in Utah to crap as much as they possibly can, and to yeah. throw as much toilet paper down the toilet as possible, because you know hey, they can where there's much. Where there's muck, there's money, as they say. All right. Oh, wow. That's, That's brilliant. A, <laughs> nice one, David. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. yeah. So let us know how that goes. Absolute that, that, genius. That, that, that's that's me really at the end. So um that's about it really, guys, for the show. Um thank you, Michael, for hosting it as ever, and, and Kurt and for John for being with us. I'm sure um everybody's missing Stephen, not. 
um, <laughs> and so of course he'll be back next week, and yep. I won't be. So um, work that one out. And uh, yeah, until the next time, lost all so, the business. Card. Remember to like and subscribe. Right. Oh, I knew I knew somebody had to say something important. <laughs> yeah. Bye.